and good afternoon. Back to day three of Euro Regionals in Malmo, Sweden. It has been a weekend. I've aged 10 calendar years in the last two and a half days. And if you've been watching this morning, you've seen two incredible games. Mind blowing, beyond. So, um, and it's just been the, t the end of two days of <laughs> mind blowing upsets. I mean, nobody is coming. Shenanigans. Nobody is coming out of Malmo where they started. No. It is. It has been absolutely insane. Well, before we talk about the shenanigans of the last two and a half days, we'll tell you about the teams who are about to play, and then we can give a little bit of backstory. Would you like to take us through Nantes roller derby? Thank you. So Nantes are playing in white. And they are today 0082 Adele Rainbow, 017 Iron Duck, 035 Flashy Strike, 11 Valair, 12 Adrenalines, 1312 Pufanar, 1818 Ziggy Starpass, 42 Nem Isis, 44 Green Bergen, 53 Buzz, 6 Dead, 66 Flash Blondie, and 6 and 678 MacGyver. Loud and Queer, who is playing for London? So, playing in the black today for London Brawling, we have 004 Swan, 020 Sable, 08 Party Pants, 1236 The Captain Madge, 1393 Texas Heat, 18 Ellis, 237 Camerat Attack, 27 Alley Cat, 31 Valks, 4 Delta Strike, 474 Wolf. Five six Dixie, seven Kitty, nine Beth Lord, and nine 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 Oblivion Newton John. So this is the bronze medal game. Is it? I hadn't realised. And I'm the prize vibrating. <laughs> the prize is not just the bronze medal; it is also a pass to global championships. Now, if you looked on paper two mm. days, three days ago, back in in the past world that we don't live in anymore, <laughs> back when I was young, it was going to be probably Toulouse and one of um, uh, you know sort of London or Crime that was going to be in this position, but we are not because yes, uh, because oh, sorry, because yesterday, Nantes beat Rainy. Yeah, that was a turn up for books. Absolutely. Nantes had come in the day before and absolutely smashed Lom, destroyed them when the Lom had beaten them just two months ago. So that was a big upset. And so booked that place to play Rainey. And so then beating Rainey booked them their place in um, the semi final where they played Crime. Crime did win by a decent margin. Um, which put Nantes in the 3-4 playoff yeah, today. Yeah, just over 100 points. So yeah. But the thing is with Nantes is that they've been such a, like, if you're going to use the phrase fairy tale team, like Nantes are the fairy tale team of this tournament. Yes. Uh, they've come in ranked. Well, their WFTDA ranking is six. Yes. And so to now be in a position where they could potentially be the second ever French team yeah. booking a ticket to champs is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, now. London and Nantes have met before, almost a year ago to the day, at West Track 2023. Yeah. London did come out triumphant, 165 to 132. But nobody, that, that nobody is counting on anything this weekend. Yeah. Now, the one thing that might mess Nantes out a little, a little bit is that we have seen that Adrenaline's a really standout jammer for Nantes against Lom is not on skates and neither is Poufinar who was not looking uh, her best in warm-up and has decided to de-kit so Lom playing with a not Lom Nantes playing with a short roster oh. Trying to get a lead, but a hit out to the outside and recycle. So not playing with 11 skaters. And we have Ziggy Starpass. Now, he thought he had lead, but didn't quite land in bounds on that apex jump. However, Dixie, the jammer for brawling, has taken the star off. So lead's still open. And now issue to Ziggy Starpass. So, yeah, Nantes have had three incredibly heavy games, and I think we're seeing that in the number of skaters. London have had two games. The game against Toulouse was... Brutal. Absolutely brutally physical. But probably have... Well, they have a full roster and probably slightly fresher legs. Listen, if any of you out there are conspiracy theorists, I feel there's a conspiracy 
a French roller derby against the British this weekend because, <laughs> you know, and that is no disrespect to the French. We probably deserve it, but they're, the time of the French is now. <laughs> yes. First points for Nantes roller derby, four on the board, and we have Delta Strike lining up against Iron Duck. What's the French for iron? I, I don't know. I can order a beer and find the train station, I wish I wish to translate the phrase, the name Iron Duck. Lead status for Delta Strike for brawling. And we have a star pass for Nantes. To Flashy Strike. It will be interesting to see. Oh, no. That oh, no. was sneaky. Oh, we lied. Wait a second. There we go. Even even the scoreboard was fooled yeah. because they had changed the name on the scoreboard. Ah, of course. Ah. Uh, no. Our wonderful producer, the child, is our translation buddy today. So Iron is fair. Fair yeah. duck. Fair duck. And what do you know? Two jams in, and we've got a tied game. I think that's going to be a fairly familiar feeling as we go through. And you, the intensity you saw in the London Toulouse game in the jamming, in the blocking, that every centimetre counted is already showing in this first and second jam. And it's it's good to see these teams really clinging to that sucker punch jammer line uh, which has been the kind of territorial battle this weekend wolf lead for nantes roller derby but there, uh, but there was a very swift star pass by nantes two flashy strike causing that jam to be called and well i think nantes will be very keen to use their pivots if they're going to be running a two jammer rotation. Two points for London in that jam, but not sneaking one. Ooh. Still Technically a lead change. Uh, it's so super close. That's Ellis on the line. First jam for Ellis, second jam for Ziggy Star Pass. So strong on that in, but escorted to the infield by Khmer after attack. Ellis picks up lead for London Brawling. Ziggy Star Pass trying to pass the star, but actually I think that was error than a, rather than a fake, but makes it out to complete initial. I have a feeling, as I have done many times this weekend, with the stakes as high as they are, there's going to be a lot of very conservative benching. Yeah, and, and also we have seen such low scoring games. I think there's only two games this weekend that have gone over 200 points for any team. And only three games, I believe, that have reached 100 or three teams that have reached 100 by the half time. Yeah, it, certainly it's, that was the case yesterday afternoon. Now, will not keep this two jammer rotation up? I mean, with three games under their belts, uh, yeah, already, already, that's going to be pretty tiring. But if one word could characterise the French team this weekend, it has been tenacity. And it's star pass again to Flash Blondie to force that jam off, and Dixie calls it. I believe that will be two points going up for London Roller Derby. Yeah. Yeah, so very effective use of the star passes from non forcing those call offs. This, the speed of the jams, the blocking, the leads, that's the, my first impression of these first few minutes. The speed and ferocity. I think one of my favourite things about Euro Derby, I know it happens worldwide, but I think it is really characteristic at this level, is how well the teams use their pivots. Stockholm, absolute masters of it. Direction of play penalty issued to the London pivot, Beth Lord. And we've got Adele Rainbow wearing the star for the yeah. first time this game for Nantes. Adele did do a lot of the jamming yesterday in the game against Crime. And you can see why, lead jam for Nantes. Delta takes the star off, resets behind the sucker punch jammer line. And London in a little bit of penalty trouble, only Texas Seeds and Kemar at attack. Instantly, two French roller derby players. Yeah. I mean, this, this is the first jam in a lead jammer for four jams for Nantes. And Important at this stage. And really, unfortunately, a star pass to Beth Lord, but a track cut issued 
So this leaves Adele Rainbow on the first power jam of the game for Nantes. And already has done eight, eight points. That's 12 points for Nantes. And London a little bit gap, a little bit gappy going into turn two. Resets their structure. But Adele Rainbow calls that jam, freezes Beth Lord as a jammer in at the AAA penalty box. There's been some ice cold benching decisions this weekend, which I respect, don't get me wrong. I mean, I know it's only six, six jams in, but we've seen maybe four points, and this one was 12 on this last jam. And we've got another lead change. Yeah. So, you know, from five points to, to 17 for Nantes, and Ziggy Star Pass on a power start. Oh, textbook work there from the Nantes blockers. It was Flash Blondie, who has already been playing out of their skates, but unfortunately picking up a penalty to the AAA penalty box. Yeah, out of out of their skates, but also out of the rules. <laughs> oh, oh! Just toe stop work for the gods. He's so skillful, it makes me want to cry. <laughs> oh, but Beth Lord goes, I will have that. And of course, because Beth Lord has the star, can draw back all the way around the track if they want. And that's easily taken 10 seconds. Yeah, really effective uh, tactical defense there from London. That was interesting. I think Ziggy was so hyped that actually went in for a hit and then called it where they could have actually called it straight away. I think they were just so, I've got to get through. That was seven points for Nantes, taking them to 24. London now on 11. 21.59 left in this half. Eight minutes gone. Oh, my, the time continuum in this hall is fake it feels like we've been here for simultaneously no time at all and months, all the, months years months. decades yeah. Ellis up against Iron Duck this time Iron Duck behind Falks Khmer Kitty uh, number 53 Buzz doing a lovely bit of line coverage there for Nantes look at this Nantes tripod dork I mean, my god both of them i'm just watching camera attack who i've been who i think has been having an incredible Very weekend come nice uh, out is a real a, just a real i can't i can't think of the other nouns oh so we've seen actually not that much of this grinding defense. It's been dynamic walling all weekend until now. But Ellis really likes that. Ellis likes getting them into a grind and then changing up the pace. But flashy strike with the star forces that jam off. Interesting to see the London jammer rotation being changed up slightly because Ellis used more as a relief jammer in yesterday's game um, Sable was out more regularly yes. and it feels like they've switched positions Sable is a real game changer so I think they'll be keeping them in reserve so we've got Adele Rainbow on the sucker punch jam line up against Wolf yeah the vice captain for brawling snarled up by dead mad guyver back in play after a bit of offense by swan and this is this more dynamic walling we've seen a lot of this weekend because of just the the sheer pushiness of the jammers that sort of static wall hasn't been very effective these angled tripods have been yeah. really effective because of course it shields the offense however it can open up a line if the jammer gets their toe stop round Great tenacity there from Wolf, who picks up lead for brawling after nearly 40 seconds. Adele Rainbow still on the initial and taken to the infield. Not being very patient, really holding these zones beautifully at the top of the pack. And, it's, and the other thing that's been so impressive is, is the speed of the walls to reform in front of the jammers. I mean, blockers these days cannot be any slower than the jammers. No, it doesn't work scientifically, does it? No. Adele Rainbow dropping to 
uh, some defense there, but taken to the outside lane in the meantime. So that second scoring pass for Wolf. So closing that gap down, but it is party pants going to the triple eight penalty box. Yeah, and some very careful pacing going on in the pack here. Uh, Adele tries to hand the star off. And Wolf swimming past these non-blockers who are extending that engagement zone really well. This is the biggest jam of the game now, I think. Well, I think that's oh, it equal. equals. It equals non stop boy jam, but I think... Uh, and it equals the score. Oh, my goodness. We have a tied game at 26. London, 26 non. That game was so fierce. Um, shin pads have been falling off. Yes, no, we did see a shin pad be yeeted to the outfield, I think is the technical term. London in a bit of blocker trouble again. Party Pants and Alley Cat sitting pretty in the Triple Eight penalty box. Not with the full four. And, and look at that tripod again. Oh. And we saw in London's game against Toulouse, the blockers not being on the track really was a challenge for London. Yeah. Beth Lord re-entering the fray as Ziggy Star Pass with lead status comes around for a scoring pass. Delta oh. being held back really well oh. by flashy strike it, and buzz. Not even the tripod. I mean, nonce, nonce twos are devastating walls. And a back block going to Beth Lord. Um, I thought for a minute that Beth had the star. She doesn't. Delta is still fighting away on this initial. A high block now called to Delta Strike. This is trouble for London. And but Nantes have had two power jumps now, but they've been at psychologically important times. Ali Cat going back to the Triple Eight penalty box. Um, yeah. And Ziggy Starpass calls the jam, which is kind of a shame because what London did so well against Toulouse yesterday is they killed every single power jam again. If you go back and watch the footage, you will see those 30 seconds get held. They get shaved off and their jammer gets sprung. But they are in blocker trouble. They've got two blockers in the penalty box plus the jammer. So and that ability to penalty kill is going to be limited. And Bergen and Buzz trying to goat Swan there. Madge, last line of defence against the Iron Duck. Does a beautiful job, but Iron Duck does pick up the lead on this power jam for Nantes. And Green Bergen taking every centimetre and second before um, Beth Lord gets back on track to stop them having that full wall. Delta now re-entering play. This, do you know what? Green Bergen is so impressive solid in that wall. Yeah. Really hard to move. Delta now completes the initial. But, but Iron Duck is complete two scoring passes. And London have called a timeout, which is a sensible and smart thing to do. But that's with Nantes on 42 and London on 26. And that timeout gives us time to thank our amazing sponsors. Like this weekend would not be possible without Triple Eight, who are very kindly sponsoring our penalty box this weekend. The KP44 knees from Triple Eight provide low profile protection for maximum mobility and comfort. And the Gear 40 duffel pack from Triple Eight was designed by Derby skaters for Derby skaters, and it's the last gear bag you'll ever need. So, a massive thank you to Triple Eight for sponsoring our penalty box, which has been kept very busy. Yeah, and you know, I think it was smart timing from London to call that time out. The last three jams they have not scored. So they're going to want to try and not let Nantes build up a mem some momentum and a lead. Now this, you may be able to tell me more about this. I didn't really see much of the Nantes rainy game. How was it there? Was it kind of back and forth the whole way through? Because it was such a tight game. 
I also missed it, but um, it was... Uh, We're a professional crew here, guys. <laughs> but it was. It came down to the last few jams. Yeah. Um, and so the they won by six points. So it had been back and forth the whole way. And then um, in the last... Oh! In the penultimate jam, unfortunately, Rainey had their jammer in the penalty box. I do remember that bit. And so at that point, with an eight-point lead, all Ziggy Starpurse had to do was get leads and call the game and that's what happened lovely take out there from party pants on flashy strike who has the star uh has received it as pivot ellis is lead for london and ellis is has such a cool head when she jams um has been a really instrumental kind of clutch jammer for London at various points over the last couple of seasons a knee pad uh, d drama going on with flashy strike and we're going all the way back into turn three and look at that recycle it's just burning up time and Ellis very good eyes making sure they don't get that cut but if flashy strike isn't jamming then they're not scoring and so Ellis is Ellis is content probably has points in the pocket but knows how important it is to stay safe but at this time it probably suits not to burn the clock down they're in the lead and you know they have got a three jammer rotation so you know they've got to pace themselves lovely hit out from madge pivot on pivot and we're playing some very slow treacly backwards roller derby at the moment i think one thing that we've definitely seen over this weekend is incredibly clever bench management oh from Nantes in particular so smart so that, you know, yes, London uh, picked up eight points, but they did keep it to only eight points and they had a bit of a breather. And I think, I think London know, and I know it sounds so obvious, but they've got to stay on track. Yes. They cannot get into a penalty spiral for jammers or blockers. It is better, even with a deficit, to play slow and safe. Speaking of uh, fast and dangerous, though, there goes uh, Ziggy Tarpas. And I mean dangerous in terms of a danger to the game, just to be yeah. very clear. So Ziggy has only failed to get lead once so far. I mean, I mean, they, I mean what a statistic to have oh. to your name. And he just found that inside line completely open from, those, um, from the non-defense. Delta working really hard on that non-tripod. Nice take out on Ziggy at the back by Swan, Kitty and Khmer. Delta almost out on the initial, but has to reset in turn one. But Ziggy finds that outside line, but finds Beth Lord in front of it. And there's Khmer. And then, but out, completes second scoring pass. Uh, number 53, that's Buzz. Heading to the triple eight penalty box. Oh, a big fall there from Beth Lord, who has received the star for London, but finds a bit of space. And Beth is looking to the bench, not sure if they could go or not. Better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, I think if you're not sure if you've cut, go back. Go back. Yeah. Unfortunately, going back, it is half the track while Ziggy makes it through. 12 points now for Nantes in this jam. I would be dropping to defence here, but at the same time... And there they are, yeah. Beth now completes the initial. Monster jam there for Nantes. 
16 points. So one of the other stats, just how close it's been all weekend, 16 points puts you up in, I think, the sort of top 10 or 15 jams of the tournament. Unless you I mean, I think about seven of those jams are probably Vanilla Slice yes. from Crime City. Vanilla's got the highest scoring with 25. 25 is the highest scoring jam this tournament. And there's only been one of them, I Yes. Think. I mean, just how... Just, Mind blowing now this whole weekend. Is Dixie well. is back out. I think this is only Dixie's second jam. I think so too. It's maybe third. And it's Iron Duck caught currently behind Madge, Party Pants, and Alley Cat. Dixie finds the tiniest of gaps to pick up lead, but Iron Duck very, very close behind. And Nant with Buzz in the Triple A penalty box. Oh, and there's the pack is speeding up, but that gives Dixie space. I mean, Dixie is, is one of those jammers that needs not even a centimetre. So Dixie's also one of the fastest humans on eight wheels. So, yeah. But what the French teams have done so well this weekend is the speed control of the pack. Oh, some really bad luck there for Dixie, who picks up a track cut. It's going to be a two-minute jam for Nantes and... Iron Duck on the power jam now. And you know, it is scoring, so every you know, every pass in the 30 seconds is gonna be points. So this jam will run for the full two minutes now. Iron Duck looking a little slower but very patient in the way that she moves these walls. Nice zonal defense going on here from London. Madge trusting her two wall, dropping back to bridge. Uh, what textbook two will hear from Swan and Party. But Dixie is out, so you were saying that London were able to keep to lose a score three in power jams. Unfortunately, in the last time, but only one scoring pass in 30 seconds. Yeah, really superb defensive structures there from London. A forearm being called on Iron Duck. Oh, no. Should that be a forearm or a four wing? <laughs> Sorry, that's a very, very poor joke. But I've only had one cup of coffee today. And even though it is Swedish coffee, which is basically rocket fuel, I'm only one person. It's been a long three days. All our good jokes were uh, used, I think, in day one. Bold of you to assume that I had any good jokes in the first place, Dork. <laughs> so we're going to have, I believe, our first power start for London. Yes. They've so, had one with Ziggy, which is yeah. when Beth was in the box. So 68 now for Nantes um, and 42 for London Roller Derby. Now, Eight minutes left on the clock. We're in an official review called by Nantes. I hate to make the very obvious point, but I really think if London want to win this game, they need to be in the lead or at least within breathing distance by half time. They need to stay out of the box. I wonder if our excellent producer could have a look at the team penalties and see how we're going with that we'll bring that to you in a second but no i think the the old the old adage right london is a second half team they really pulled it back against toulouse yes. in the second half yesterday they need to do that now yes they need to pretend that this eight minutes is the last eight minutes of the second half not the yes. first half yes. so we are on 13 penalties for london i thought that said 73 for a minute and i was about to lose my mind but no it's eight it's 13 for London, 8 for Nantes. Yeah, and when you look at the London to lose game, I think that, you know, London did close it down in the second half, but part of that was because Toulouse then did drop a load of penalties. Nantes have elected to use their official review to challenge the no call on the London jammer electing to jump over a down skater in the previous jam. So, Nantes are using their official review to challenge the lack of a no call, of a, a penalty not being called when uh, Dixie, so the jammer in the previous jam, uh, jumped over a down skater. Now, when Dixie jumps, Dixie jumps pretty high. Mm -hmm. So, I wonder if it was that they felt contact was made or if they felt that it was unsafe conduct generally. It's about avoidable actions. So, so I think it's, it's um, you know, was there a way they could have avoided doing that? Was it that the skater dropped right in front of them in which, you know, um, 
which would therefore give them no option for safety but to jump over them? Yeah. Or was it because they were jumping over a down skater to gain a track advantage? So that would be the, the that would be you know some of the potential scenarios they're discussing in the ref huddle. Not for the first time this weekend. I'm incredibly glad that I'm not a ref. But speaking of refs, yes. let's give a shout out to our incredible skating officials for this game. Three full crews this weekend. They've put in an absolute shift. So our head ref for this game is Jean Claude Grand Slam, and he is joined by Divide by Zero, Chuck Homer, you didn't, Lise Kurt so good, Lucas, and Major Buzzkill. And we're going to hear the results of that official review now. The pod review, whilst the jammer did indeed jump over a down blocker, there was no impact whatsoever on the game, so the no call will stand. So again. So again, this was his point. Was it done to create an advantage on the track? And the review of the officials was there's no advantage to Dixie by doing that. So therefore, the no call stands. And the official review have been has been lost by now. Yeah. I mean, I would argue that you're, you're better to jump over a down skater than to skate into them. But you could avoid them altogether. Is so the, is the point. Now we start on a power jam for London. I end up still in the box, the triple eight penalty box. Ellis, with a real burst of speed, uh, picks up lead for London in under ten seconds. Ellis is a great jammer for this scenario. She uses space really well. She's got a real turn of speed. She is taken to the inn by Nantes Wall. London resetting their defence in the back as Iron Duck re-enters play. Lovely swarming, swirling defence here from Nantes. Number 11, Valère, so agile in that structure. I mean, all of the Nantes blockers have been incredible this weekend. It's hard to pick any of them out, but Valère has been doing an incredible an absolute first rate job. Valer's going to go say hello to the Triple Eight penalty box uh, after picking up a direction of play penalty. Ellis tries the apex but is going to reset behind uh, Flash Blondie. Khmer, Kitty, and Texas Heat in a really nicely angled wall here. Trapping Iron Duck. So, so again, I think you know we're seeing this grind static wall defense. It's just exhausting. Yeah, it's a fantastic yeah. defensive kill by both teams. You know, yeah. Ellis already has four on the jam and is being moved really well. But that's the non-pivot flash blondie in for a head blocking with the head, and that frees up Ellis. 10 seconds on the jam, eight points to Ellis's name. Can she pick up a few more? Oh, what a major jam for London. Losing Texas Heat to the box, um, I believe for a direction of gameplay at the end of that jam. And a bit of discussion with the jammer refs. So Ellis has 100% lead jammer uh, percentage at the moment, but we have Wolf on the jam line up on the uh, sucker punch jam line up against Del Rainbow and an official timeout. And in the official timeout, we'd also like to say thank you to our non-skating officials this game: X-Ray Ted, Blind Io, Eagle Eye Mary, Trash Panda, Alpinetti, Felspeth, Supreme Overlord, Mina Harker, Abracaflabra, Penalty Bock, and Kiravi. Thank you so much to all our incredible officials this weekend, without whom we would not be able to sit here and talk nonsense about yeah, the best I'm sport in the world. The the Ready to go because in five you, seconds. Math, Ooh, you know, my heart rate is, it has been up this weekend. Really tight, scrummy start for Wolf and Adele Rainbow. Feels like a while since we've seen Adele out, but that's because time isn't real. And it's Greenberg and picking up the penalty, but Adele Rainbow picking up lead. A cut track oh. going, oh no, a forearm going to Wolf. A cut track was issued, I believe, to Party Pants, who is reporting to the box. Yeah. That is Heat's release. 
But that's London in some blocker trouble again. That is the fourth jammer penalty for London, um, and uh, not on one. Mm. And and I think they've also been at the worst times. I think with. I don't know what it is about the French jammers, but they are so efficient with their bodies. Yes. I know that's a really weird phrase, but they don't put anywhere anything anywhere that it doesn't need to be put. So two London blockers in the Triple Eight penalty box. So Ziggy Star Pass is through in second. Yeah, Mad Giver and uh, Flashy Strikes swallowing up Kitty and Beth Lord really well. Yeah. And again, you see the non-blockers not having to block, just positional blocking all the way through. Oh, and that's that's a cut track for coming in, or illegal re-entry penalty. Yeah, from Ali. London. So yeah, Ali Cat goes back yeah. to the Triple Eight penalty box. Party pants back in play, but Ziggy Star Pass on an absolute screamer in this jam. And it's a direction for party pants as well. So we are still two London blockers in the box. Ziggy calls the jam. That's 12 points for Nantes, stretching the lead out to 84. London now on 53. And that was the first lead in three jams for Nantes. But you know what? Look at this score with that yeah, 31 points ahead. Yeah. But with three more uh, jammer penalties for London, that's kind of mm. that's kind of the gap. Big cheers coming in from the crowd for both teams as Dixie and Iron Duck line up against each other. Iron Duck with two to beat at the front, but Dixie finds a tiny line, picks up lead. Iron Duck just inches behind. Cent um, centimetres. Um, it'll be interesting to see how London run this. They're going to run it. Yeah. I mean, at this stage, it's worth the risk. I think London are holding Iron Duck really well. Mm. So I think Dotty at the bench will have noticed that. And they're trusting Dixie to go to work, put some points up on the board for London. But look at how well Nanta covering that apex, yeah. which is Dixie's happy place. Yeah. And so both both teams picking up penalties, oh sorry, points and Nantes picking up a block in the box. Two blockers now for Nantes. Four points for Nantes, three for London. So that, that mm. risk didn't quite pay off, unfortunately. But for the first time this game, we're going to have 0 2 0 Sable. You're right, first Listen. time we've seen them on the jam line. Listen, Sable is one of the most skillful jammers in Europe. But also, only two non blockers on track. Oh, just yeah. but look at that threading, that yeah. path finding from Sable. They're so strong. And they're so intelligent on track. But even with a full London wall, Adele Rainbow is out and forcing the jam. London only able to get the four. Yeah, but what a slick jam from Sable there. Doing Sable exactly looks... what she does best. She looks delighted with that. I was going to say, she looks very happy. 28 points in it. We have a minute 20 left this half. And Wolf lines up against Ziggy Star Pass. Nantes still light in the box. Yep. Still light on track because they've got yeah. two in the box. We Those should have been two separate sentences. <laughs> Listen, grammar and so, syntax um, is not as important as my emotions right now. No. Great footwork there from Wolf. Oh, who, and great one-on-one -on -one blocking, but you can't hold back, Wolf. But look, that's the maybe the first time that Ziggy's not lead. Second, second time. Yeah, second time. Not now back in full force and reforming ahead of Wolf. But, and it's non picking up the forearms, freeing up Wolf to complete the four points. Ziggy with star in hand. I'm looking for. Star. We've had a star pass in Nantes. And the, oh no, oh. we don't. Ziggy picks up. The star. Yeah. Oh. So the star pass was completed. Flashy strike dropped the star. Ziggy picked it up, but Ziggy's no longer the jammer. 
So it was an illegal procedure on Ziggy so because Flash Blondie is the jammer. But the jammer's cover yes. was dropped to the outside. Yes. So by, yeah. But by Flashy Ziggy. Strike. No, Ziggy picked up the star. Yeah, yeah. Flashy had already had it. Yeah. Star Pass had completed. Ziggy was no longer the jammer, so Ziggy can't touch the jammer cover. Yeah. So that's why Ziggy went to the box. And I I don't think Flash had fully clocked that that star pass was complete. No, I don't think that Flashy clocked that they had dropped the cover. Because they didn't look at it. They didn't go... They did. They turned away from it as mm. they went to the inside. I'm not sure they knew they'd dropped it. Listen, I can highly relate to not having any brain cells uh, <laughs> functional at, at most times. Um, but that is a major jam for Wolf and her pack for London. 12 points. We're 16 jam, points right? away. And we're in a timeout. But the jam clock for this period has run down. Oh, yeah. So we have two Nantes blockers in the triple eight penalty box. Third consecutive jam, starting yeah. with a two wall on track for the French. Yeah. And a nice little moment between Camo Rat Attack and uh, Flashy Strike on track. I don't know if Flashy Strike is on Team France, but Camo is, so they might know each yeah. other through that. So we've got two non blockers lining up on next to the Sucker Punch jam line in front of Sable, I believe. Now, yes. Now, no, this is interesting because Ziggy is in the box. So if Ziggy was still. Yeah, Ziggy so went Zig, in as blocker. a blocker. Yes, yes. sorry, I'm just so catching up on the conversation we had. It's, it's one of those very technical penalties, but I think it's just melted everybody's brains listen, at four o'clock on the Sunday. I I don't know the rules. I'm just told when I've broken them. <laughs> That's how I operate. You're not shouting at me, it's legal. Oh, precisely. This is why we love yeah. the refs. They keep me honest. So this, but that was one of those scenarios where they do the what if when you're at training. Mm. That you don't expect to see all that often. And we're in intermission. So I'm going to go scream into the void briefly. Okay, or a pillow. Or a pillow. Yeah. But I think the void is available. Um, it is 88 to Nantes. Yep. It is 72 to London. Yep. This is the bronze medal game. Yes. The winner of this game goes to Portland. Yes. I am not okay right now. I'm not very calm. But in about 12 and a half minutes, I will be. So. Yes. Refresh your beverage, stretch your legs, scream into the void yourself should you feel so inclined, and we'll see you back here in about 12 minutes. This is the totally redesigned Life Revisor helmet from S1. Featuring our patented Fusion Foam, this helmet has the impact protection you've come to expect from an S1 helmet and is both multiple impact and high impact certified. Our new custom visor is made with a high impact polycarbonate lens, which is optically correct and features our patented cover catcher, which allows for multiple covers to be worn with easy on off. The outside lens has an anti scratch coating while the inside has an anti fog coating. The outer shell is equipped with in-mold mounting hardware so that the visor can be removed and replaced if needed. The S1 Lifer Visor Helmet, where innovation and function are actualized. Ready to make two-minute jams feel easy? Tired of second-guessing your training routine? Want to feel more confident when you step on the track? Then Crash Course is for you. We turn skaters into MVPs. If you started Crash Course today, in four weeks, you'll be less tired at the end of a two minute jam. In eight weeks, your footwork will get you to the line faster. And in 12 weeks, you'll be the skater that everyone wants in their path. Scan this QR code to learn more. Life is a contact sport, win. Whoop.
Hey folks, did you know that your head is not normal? No one's is. If your helmet size is a small, but your teammate size is an extra large, wearing the same helmet shell doesn't just look kind of ugly. The functionality of the EPS foam and how it disperses impact energy is compromised. The Triple Eight Certified Sweat Saver comes in better shell size options than our leading competitor, giving you the highest level of protection on impact. Try for yourself. We got you. This is the totally redesigned Life Revisor Helmet from S1. Featuring our patented Fusion Foam, this helmet has the impact protection you've come to expect from an S1 helmet and is both multiple impact and high impact certified. Our new custom visor is made with a high impact polycarbonate lens, which is optically correct and features our patented cover catcher which allows for multiple covers to be worn with easy on-off. The outside lens has an anti-scratch coating, while the inside has an anti-fog coating. The outer shell is equipped with in-mold mounting hardware, so that the visor can be removed and replaced if needed. The S1 Lifer Visor Helmet, where innovation and function are actualized. two-minute jams feel easy? Tired of second-guessing your training routine? Want to feel more confident when you step on the track? Then Crash Course is for you. We turn skaters into MVPs. If you started Crash Course today, in four weeks, you'll be less tired at the end of a two-minute jam. In eight weeks, your footwork will get you to the line faster. And in 12 weeks, you'll be the skater that everyone wants in their pack. Scan this QR code to learn more. Life is a contact sport. Win. Whoop! Hey folks, did you know that your head is not normal? No one's is. If your helmet size is a small, but your teammate size is an extra large, wearing the same helmet shell doesn't just look kind of ugly. The functionality of the EPS foam and how it disperses impact energy is compromised. The Triple Eight Certified Sweat Saver comes in better shell size options than our leading competitor, giving you the highest level of protection on impact. Try for yourself, we've got you. This is the totally redesigned Life Revisor Helmet from S1. Featuring our patented Fusion Foam, this helmet has the impact protection you've come to expect from an S1 helmet and is both multiple impact and high impact certified. Our new custom visor is made with a high impact polycarbonate lens, which is optically correct and features our patented cover catcher which allows for multiple covers to be worn with easy on-off. 
The outside lens has an anti-scratch coating, while the inside has an anti-fog coating. The outer shell is equipped with in-mold mounting hardware, so that the visor can be removed and replaced if needed. The S1 Lifer Visor Helmet, where innovation and function are actualized. two-minute jams feel easy? Tired of second-guessing your training routine? Want to feel more confident when you step on the track? Then Crash Course is for you. We turn skaters into MVPs. If you started Crash Course today, in four weeks, you'll be less tired at the end of a two-minute jam. In eight weeks, your footwork will get you to the line faster. And in 12 weeks, you'll be the skater that everyone wants in their path. Scan this QR code to learn more. Life is a contact sport. Win. Whoop! And welcome back to this second half of the third game of the third day 
of the WFTD Regional here in Malmo, Sweden. We are one minute 44 seconds away from the second half of London Roller Derby versus North Roller Derby. This is the bronze medal game. This, this the next 30 minutes are literally life-changing yeah. for one of these two teams. Because it's not just the bronze medal, it is a ticket to global championships in Portland, Oregon, third to the first to the third of November later this year. Now both teams want this. London have been before. Nantes, this is their first ever WFTDA post-season tournament. And that was their goal this season, yes. right, was to make it to this tournament. They kind of came onto the world stage at West Track last year yeah. and have had a blinder of a tournament. I want whatever gym program these skaters are using, because just to be clear, they're skating with 11 skaters right now. And this is their fourth game of the tournament. And three jammers. Yes. And, and and it's mostly been, I'm going to say 2.5 jammers, not yes. to do Adele Redingbo any disservice, but it's mainly been Ziggy and Iron Duck yeah. alternating, Adele coming out every so often. That said, it is Adele Rainbow lining up for this first jam. Ziggy Starpass sitting in the box as a blocker. Yep. And London Brawling sending Ellis yes. to the Sucker Punch jammer line. We have two, only two non-blockers on the box, uh, on the, sorry, on the second bunch, I'm like, because we have two in the triple eight penalty box. Again, should have been two sentences. Okay, are we ready for the second And part London getting um, hyped over half time, doing some really sing songs, scared. probably warming up for the after party Beautiful karaoke. Let's so play London's roller derby. We have uh, Buzz re-entering the box. Ellis. However, picking up a track cut without even getting to the pivot line. Nice hold here from London, but Adele Rainbow scoops her hips around Kitty, picks up lead for Nantes. So this is the fifth jammer penalty for London. And Nantes have only had one, and I think that has been the key statistic in this game so far. And they, they don't, these, these jammer penalties, seem to have come out of nowhere for London. It's not been big, dramatic moments. It's been so, moments that we almost can't see one. from our vantage point. Yeah. Ellis, really strong out of the box though. Huge strength. Forcing that jammer to be called off. But uh, that was just so impressive. That's what Ellis does. She She's impressive. So this is the first lead in three jams for Nantes, but importantly, that first lead in the first in the first jam of the second half. Yeah, that psychological boost, and yeah. they have a 21-point lead. Everyone hugging at the Sucker Punch jammer line. Iron Duck and Wolf. Duck and Wolf. Oh, I love a coincidence. Wolf shoves her offense swan into the Nantes wall, and look at this threading work going on. Here, great hold at the back from London's defensive tripods. Wolf does not pick up lead, picks up a forearm. But, uh, but Iron Duck had already taken the helmet cover off, hearing the lead jammer whistle. So that means the lead is not open to Iron Duck. There is no lead. This is a two minute jam. Yeah, and we have seen this, that now jammers are so conditioned to take off the helmet cover when they hear the lead jammer whistle. If there is a late call on that penalty, this happens. Yeah, well, Wolf was out of the engagement zone when the penalty was issued. Yeah. So. so it was absolutely right to have whistled lead. Mm. But, and it's also right, you know, late calls are absolutely reasonable as well. It's just an unfortunate circumstance because of that almost now instinctive reaction to take off the helmet cover. Nice funneling there from Swan to push Iron Duck into the nook of that London tripod. London did some really great power kills yesterday. Iron Duck has picked up four points on that power jam. Wolf now completes the initial. Iron Duck pushed to the outside. Yeah, drawn back by Party Pants and Texas Heat. But Wolf also facing considerable challenge, even with Swan going in with the offense, that, that non-tripod is immovable. None are so good at staying 
keeping their centre of gravity really low and especially against taller jammers and um, the likes of Wolf, Lily Gaskell from Rainy City. It's such an effective strategy. So not choosing to play this jam long. Well, not choosing, there's no lead. Oh, there's no lead, that was it. But the jam comes to its natural conclusion. Yeah. 10 points going up for Nantes. They have broken the century and that is 27 points. And I'm just having a look. Oh no, it is it is zero. Uh, sorry, four points for London. I was looking at the jam ref's hand, getting confused on which team is which. It's been a long three days. It's been an emotional three days. It's been a long life, dog. <laughs> I do. I ju not to be dramatic, but I feel like my whole derby life has built up to this game. I think European roller derby have been building to this tournament for probably ten years. Well, it's, it's also weird because London's my home team. So to see people that you train with or are coached by on the track in the biggest tournament of their lives at the moment is huge. Dixie with a much needed lead status for London brawling. Fight past. Oh, that was fantastic. Mad Guyver yeah. doing a masterclass in one on one blocking. The, like the, the Nantes and Toulouse and Paris. I think it's really French. The one on one blocking this weekend has been unreal. Greenberg and also incredible to the central to all of those walls and defense and Dixie running this jam this is not a strategy we've seen much of from London they are ahead so they've got a net gain they're one pass ahead and when Dixie gets on a scoring run it can swing the momentum for London but I think if I think this is something playing on something that non probably don't want talked about there's 11 players on track they've done three games 11 they are, players on track my sorry, on, the, on the team but they are tired so if you make the jammers do a full jam at mm. full speed for as long as possible, it's going to take whatever energy they have left. I think it's going to be a real challenge when we get to 10 minutes and 5 minutes to go, how much energy are not going to have? And I think Dot is picking up on that. And that's got to be one of the most dramatic pull-offs of the weekend. But a monster jam for London. 16 points and all of a sudden we're back at a 19 point spread. My days and stars, Dork. I'm not sure how much more of this my nerves can take. So we have Adele Rainbow up against Sable on the Sucker Punch jam line. We have an empty Triple Eight penalty box. You know you've just cursed it, right? Yeah. A really huggy jam line start. Bodies on the floor. Oh, an illegal contact penalty going to Adele Rainbow. But, but Sable has taken the star off. We're in another two minute grind. That is stressful, and that's going to be a, track, a forearm for Sable who now goes to the triple eight penalty box. So, so it's going to release Adele Rainbow. A switcheroo. So each, uh, Sable will only sit the amount of time that Adele sat, which wasn't the full 30 seconds because she wasn't standing. But that is a cut track penalty on uh, Kitty for London. So London now two blockers in the box. No, just one. Uh, one's just, uh, Sable's just been released, yes. And Adele on a scoring pass now. Great hold from Valks, but a multiplayer called for her trouble. So now we d I did curse that, sorry, London. So two blockers in the Triple Eight penalty blocks for London. But they're still holding back Adele Rainbow, who's now going back to do defense. Yeah, just a nice bit of spatial clogging there from Adele Rainbow. Oh, but a forearm for Adele Rainbow, who looks most disconcerted at that decision. That's three jammer penalties this jam. But two of them went 30 seconds. I think that's key. And that is- We're a, still on initial passes here. But Buzz is now coming to the box for Nantes on their sixth penalty. And number six, six, Flash Blondie as well. So if Sable can get hips past one, that's three points. That's the full four. 
And it's two seconds left in the jam. Sable really holding her nerve so well there, coming out on that penalty. But Nant had three in the pocket. So, yeah. Bearing in mind this was a two minute jam with three jammer penalties, there was still four points and three points. Yeah. So, yeah, London now on 25 penalties and Nant on 21. But it's, uh, you know, that's probably jammer penalty six for London. I mean, listen, when you play roller derby at this higher level, penalties are perhaps almost inevitable because the impact, the strength of these players is so high. Yeah. They're on the edge of what is, is legal and not legal. But while we're in this team timeout called by Nantes, who I, I think smart timing, trying to give themselves a breather, chance to talk about Sucker Punch Skate Shop, who are our Jammer Line sponsor and are helping this weekend happen. Sucker Punch Skate Shop, the biggest roller derby shop in Europe. Fastest shipping, largest stock. Expert advice at the best price. Sucker Punch Skate Shop online, check them out. Yeah, we are really grateful to our sponsors. Like the amount of effort and let's face it, money yeah. that, takes, that it takes to put on a tournament of this size. And to get this incredible venue. Oh, I love this venue. I love Sweden. They've and taken such good care of us as volunteers. And as well. Prime City have done an incredible hosting job. I know I keep saying incredible, but this whole weekend... Incroyable in the if, French. If you're not here, you have missed out. Yeah. Wolf and Ziggy. Oh! Ziggy with lead, but Wolf giving chase and a little bit of a smile there from the brawling jammer who takes the edge. Oh! Did he get... Oh! 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 oh. Oh, should we explain why we're making noises? Yes, yeah, so Ziggy, Ziggy Star Pass just was holding back, trying to get one point, did, did hit the pack, hit the floor, but picked up a penalty. So he's now starting the next jam in the Triple Eight penalty box. Was it an out of play contact? Can you check it's illegal positioning? So I think they had a foot out when they threw the hitting. Yes, possibly. And the hope of London burns in Ellis as she takes lead status. She's got a full 30 seconds to work with. Oh, that threading offense by Beth Lord. That was a masterclass in offense, but that was a forearms yeah. for Beth Lord, which... Yeah. Texas Heat also being yeah. lost to the Triple Eight penalty box. So Ziggy Star Pass now back on track with only two London blockers. Great eyes there from Madge who slows Ziggy down for a fraction of a second. Ellis comes in. Lateral work, just unbelievable work from and Ellis there. Buzz with that hit across the track but doesn't hold back Ellis. But Ziggy Star Pass through for points. And Ellis. London going to run this because they yeah. need those blockers out. Although they get Texas Heat out. Oh, Lord. So, 14 points for London in that jam, taking them to 110. Listen. Nont 4, taking them to 118. Listen, given that London are my home team, yes. I think the fact that I'm keeping my voice steady right now, I should get some kind of medal. Um, maybe I, maybe a bronze one would be nice. <laughs> I will say that you are definitely blushing a little in the cheeks with How excitement. How dare you? Iron Duck out front. Picks up lead. And Sable passes that star off super quick to Beth Lord. But... Beth Lord comes back, goes, because Sable, no, it's for you. It was an not incomplete star pass, so they would have to try that again. Like, not it. Yeah. But then Iron Duck calls that jam. That's confusing. Maybe Iron Duck did not realise that they were having an incomplete star pass. Possibly. Uh, but nonetheless, wouldn't you run the gambit? I don't know, maybe they're saving their legs. Yeah. 
Because, you know, there are those big jams from London, but apart from that, Nantes have been grinding out the lead. So actually, is it better to have 30 seconds and a small jam, 30 seconds and a small jam? Dixie and Adele, rainbow with the stars. And Dixie oh. picks up lead. Mad Guyver literally looked away for one second and Dixie was still Dixie on Dixie doesn't side. need a second. Yeah. They are supersonic when they get on a roll. Oh, and Adele Rainbow with the jammer pullback, forcing Dixie to call the jam. Yeah, no point Smart. in playing that game. No point for no point for London, but it's giving not. If you at this stage, if I was London, I'd be looking to run every jam long because not need those thirty seconds to breathe. Did London just keep the same pack on? I feel like they did. I don't know. I can't. I'd, my eyes aren't working anymore, which is moderately awkward when my only job right now is to see things. So, 121 for Nantes, 110 for London Roller Derby. And it's Ziggy and Wolf. Great offence coming in there from Dead. Both jammers caught up in that, that mess on the inside line. Both jammers now stuck behind really hard trial pods, but it's Wolf that gets out first. I tell you, Dork, if I had pearls right now, I would be clutching them. Party pants with the recycle for Ziggy Starpus, but it's Madge in the penalty box for London. Yeah. Ziggy tries, it's, it's party pants again with the hit out and recycle. That know, is their speciality. Party's so good on these lines. Yeah. It's really delightful to see. Offense. And offense going in. Thought it was offense. No, it was a star pass. Two flashy strike. Oh, this work from Party in the oh. front row. The whole room is going mad and it's because of the quality of the game. But that forces the jam to be called. London picking up three. So this is now an eight point game. 15 minutes left on the clock. I'm actually physically stressed now. Like my physical levels of comfort. My, my pimples are goosed. Well, anybody who knows me can see the excitement in my voice. This is an incredible game. Okay. If you're uh, watching at home, text all your friends. They need to be watching this today. We've got Ellis and Iron Duck. Oh, great work from Iron Duck on that inside line. And she is lead for Nantes. Ellis having to push out up front against the Nantes blockers. And it Ellis is so strong. She can do it. She's got to be careful. But Iron Duck now scoring points with every hit that they pass. And there's a star pass by London. Beth Lord now jamming release. Complete initial. Iron Duck is going to the penalty box. That's a two minute jam now. Yep, two minute jam with a power jam to London. And Beth Lord picks up one point, picks up two, picks up the full four. Great work there from the London pivot. But Iron Duck will have points in the pocket. And you know what, don't worry about Ellis being in the blocking position now because she's a cracking blocker in her own right. Iron Duck standing, Beth Lord in the pack. Kamer Ratatak now on the offence for Beth Lord. But not brushing that offence off. And it's, it's hard to brush off Kamer Ratatak, let's, let's be honest. Iron Duck in the pack, get some offence from... Oh, get some offence from Valère. Look at this. Defense. Oh, Beth Lord sneaks on the inside, apex jump, but gets a cut track. Didn't land it or didn't take off appropriately. So now, power jam to Nantes. I'm going to lose my voice. But I think Beth's looking frustrated because she landed and wasn't making forward movement. It may be that the takeoff wasn't legal. Potentially. Because the speed with that, that the cut was called would possibly be because the takeoff wasn't legal. So, Iron Duck through, four points. But Beth will have points in the pockets. Jam comes to an end, official review called by London. And I would bet my bottom dollar that Dottie is going to question that cut call and ask for it to be rescinded. Yes. I think she will argue that if Beth landed 
out of bounds wasn't given the chance to seed because she if she landed that bounce she then fell immediately yeah. this is why i'm not a ref because possibly so, something else happened that i don't know about because for an apex jump to be legal the takeoff and the landing have to be legal yes i and understand so, that so, so that's yeah. probably what will be clarified if they yeah. lose the review we've got a four point game I am not okay. coping emotionally <laughs> at this point in time, but I'm sitting down because if we stand up on this platform, then the platform rattles and that rattles the camera. And of course we want this viewing experience for our dear people watching at home to be excellent. Let's hear from our head ref. London have elected to use their official I am Mystic Meg. I am the crystal ball. <laughs> Slash, it was the only thing I could think of that yeah. was happening. That would warrant using an official review halfway through the half. It would have to be something I, that as a bench going, I don't think that was right, so I want that review. Do you know what? Dottie, Dottie has been on the circuit for a while. She knows her stuff and Beth is really experienced. And if she didn't think it was worth it, she would have told Dottie, no, no, no I definitely. Yeah. But like I say, I don't think it was that the cut didn't happen. It was that she wasn't given the chance to seed the cut because she was on the floor. Je ne sais pas. But even if you're on the floor, you need to start making crawling motions to Beth didn't things. even crawl. Let the woman live. And that's why I'm thinking it might be the takeoff because mm. the call was so quick. They would have been looking for... I tell you, yeah. though, if uh, this... Yeah, and it is that London are out saying because they, that uh, the, the jammer did not have the opportunity to stand up right. Yeah, no, it was a very quick yeah. cut call. And don't get me wrong, our officials are the best of the best, yeah. right? But the part of the joy of the roller derby is that it's a game of human error and human adaptation. Here, oh, well, so Jean-Claude... Grand Slam now telling the captains and benches the result of the official review. I can't look, Doc. You're going to have to tell me. I will tell you what, what is going to happen. I'm not so, going to use my eyes. What we were, what we are looking for is uh, either JQ to tell us or a change in the box. No, I, we will hear from JQ now. <laughs> The cut call will stand. The cut was issued prior to the apex jump, and therefore London have lost their review for the free. You are Mystic Meg. You are yeah. the crystal ball. So actually, the, if you didn't hear that, the cut happened before the apex jump. So it wasn't even the takeoff. It was previous to that. So the call does stand. So, uh, and London you you, you might have caught Dotty, the bench, the shouting, the no justice for Beth. <laughs> <laughs> which I think will have to be London's new merch idea. So, a jam, power jam start for Ziggy Star Pass. Non, with four points in the lead. Now coming up for scoring pass. And it is Mad Guy in with the offence now bridging. It's three London, two London blockers, one London blocker, four points for Nantes. Do you know what? Ziggy's physicality is unreal. Like to move London with that much speed is really hard. And a star pass to Madge. I didn't even see that happen. Madge I think and Beth have worked together a lot. Yeah. Ziggy calls the jam. Oh, but oh, it was a cut. It's a cut track. And Madge didn't even touch a non-player on that pass because everybody thought that there was going to be a call. I can't so, look. Yeah. Or I can't do it. I can. I'm a professional. Yeah. And it's Greenbergen with a direction penalty to the Triple L eight penalty box. Madge. Madge out now, four points. We have a tied game. Listen, Madge is clinical. She is ice cold. She is one of the best blockers in Europe. And she knows she's got to stay safe. She's got to be careful. And, and it's a forearms penalty for Madge as Ziggy Starpass. 
comes is back my on the chart. I jinxed it. So, so I'm going to get killed now. So Ziggy now scoring pass. Just hump me. Can't push Ziggy out. Four points. They take now 12 points for them. They take the lead. 137 to Nantes, 129 to London. This and jam comes to an end with an apex jam. Oh, sorry for shouting. No, that was, to be fair, that was very cool. Ooh. To be fair, to, to give credit. Oh, but they, they, he didn't land it. Uh, homo you didn't says, homo you didn't. No. Um, Oh, so 137 points to Nantes. I feel physically sick. Official timeout. <laughs> just because they were checking with the scoreboard, so they're just getting the referees back in place. Listen, listen. Let's just remind the people watching at home that a place at Champs is at stake here. And if Nantes win this game, for the first time in history, we will have two... French teams. We've never had a French team no. at Champs. Toulouse to guarantee the spot. Yeah. Can you imagine the noise that is going to go off in here if we end up with two French teams at Champs? But the team who remembers only goal was to get here. Oh, right. So, 1-3-2 London, 1-3-7 Nantes. 11 minutes left in this game and I am actually losing my mind. I mean, my mind, I think, has already been thoroughly, okay. thoroughly lost. So, Madge is standing in the box with yes. the star on her head. Adele Rainbow takes the power start for Nantes, comes up against Kitty, Fawkes, and Beth Lord. What a masterclass in two walls at the front we have here. But it's Adele with the forearms. And London have lead. Madge is out, lead. Adele Rainbow with the forearms penalty. So much as we talked about London jam and penalties, and we've got a, I think that's a call off for injury. So yeah. we'll take a break on the screen. But we'll still keep talking. Yeah, you haven't got rid of us that oh. easily. So we were talking about London's penalties were leading to that gap in the first half. Nantes are now probably equaling on the jammer penalties. These last three, four jams, they've had a number of jammer penalties. I think, you know, and we still have 10 minutes to go. Yeah, it's, it's six jammer penalties for Nantes and five for London. And because, now that jam wasn't called for injury. Madge no. did call the jam. Um, I feel, I don't have the numbers in front of me to prove it, although the child does, so maybe you could check this. I feel like forearms are coming pretty thick and fast in this game. We also have two London blockers on five penalties, one Nantes blocker on six and one Nantes blocker on five. And remember, Nantes only have 11 people on skates. Yeah, but do you know what? It doesn't feel like it. No. It does not feel like it. Yeah. So we are back. It is so Ellis on the jam line, Adele Rainbow in the in AAA London. penalty box. Yeah, uh, six, six forearms for both teams from the child. Yeah, so I, I told you it felt like a lot. So we're on a power start. Ellis with the star. But, but we are this 15 seconds into this power jam. Power start. Goes. No, and that is to, I, I think it's to uh, Buzz. No, no it's, to dead. it's to dead. Adele Rainbow back on track, lead not yet established after 35 seconds. So great work by Nantes with that, with that penalty kill, but now lead for London. A uh, really beautiful offense there by Swan, working so well with Ellis to get them through. Ellis now on her scoring pass. Adele Rainbow has taken the helmet cover off, but has hit out Ellis and is re Cycling. Ellis not having any of it calls for the jam. Yeah, do you know what? Not playing that drawback game with their jam yeah. is really well. Yeah. You've got to hand it to them. Neither team picking up uh, points, but I that thought... was a minute off the clock. 
No, um, uh, I, yeah, no points. So London I, got out, but then reabsorbed. Not, yeah. uh, not did not finish their initial. The right oh, just give them some points for trying. Come on, come on, come on. Official timeout. I'm just going to stand up and have a stretch, and in hopes that some of the adrenaline leaves my body. But I'm not going to shake the platform. If the camera yeah. does a yeah. bit of a wobble. I apologise, but so I'm going to try not to. So that's two jams with no points for either the team, but the official timeout comes to an end. <sighs> I, I feel the need to breathe. I, I don't feel I can breathe deeply breathing, right now. Breathing is overrated. So, jam underway. Iron Duck on the Sucker Punch jam line up against Wolf for London. And it's both of them actually at the same point in the pack. Iron Duck on the outside, then the inside, Wolf on the outside. Oh, that's looking like hard work, I think is the fairest way to describe that. You know, yes, it does look like hard work, but if anyone can do that, that's Wolf. And Iron Duck. I mean, you think how much Iron Duck has had to push this weekend. Yeah. And that was a cut track penalty for Iron Duck. I've stopped breathing. And Wolf is lead. Now, if Wolf can get a scoring pass and another point at least, there will be a lead change. London is speed in the pack up to try and break up that not wall before it can reform in front of Wolf. But no such luck. Yeah, not dropping to full defence. And London lining up. Iron Duck standing. So, and Iron Duck release. So, although this, the initial has been completed, that's a, again a strong penalty kill from Nantes. London go back to recycle Iron Duck, who's back on track. But then we have Buzz going back to recycle Wolf even further. And it's Wolf through for four points. I end up still, I end up still on her initial, reaching for the star pass. A whistle goes. That's to vouch that's for a direction. And oh, Beth and Lord. Beth Lord as well. And that forces the jam. So London only but picking up the oh, six points. Lead change, London 138, Nantes 137, but 6 minutes 44 left. Nantes need to keep the jammers out of the box. And London need to keep this lead. But they have two blockers in the triple eight penalty box. Doesn't stop Dixie, but Ziggy star pass also completes initial. So Dixie now has a full Nantes wall. Dixie picks up a point. <laughs> Ziggy star pass completes. Oh, and Dixie's going to get called on a track cut. Oh, so power jam to Nantes with one London blocker on the track. Uh, Beth Lord and Valks back on track. So there's three London on the wall. Um, three London on the track to form a wall. Ziggy skates right past them. 12 points in this jam for Nantes. You know what? If we were doing MVPs this tournament, I think Ziggy might win all three of them. I know that's literally the only job I've got today. And weaves through that one on one defence from London, not holding Ziggy star pass back. But this is a two minute jam, we still have 50 seconds to go. And Dixie completes the scoring pass out of the box. But Ziggy on, on his fifth scoring pass. Seems excessive. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Dead. Yeah. Dead. Dead knocks Dixie down. This is now the biggest jam of the game. But Dixie completes it's eight points for London, 20 for Nantes, but Ziggy now picking up points. 
Nice lateral coverage there by Vaux. Dixie not slowing down. Puts up another pass. But the offence goes in and Ziggy is free. And the jam comes to an end. Oh! 24 points for Nantes. 12 points for London. 150 to London. 161 to Nantes. 4 minutes 14 left in this game. Do you know what? London need to not give up at this point. If they give up, they've lost. This but is they not, won't. This is, this is not insurmountable. No, listen, no. Not to the underdog. Not have a big crowd in here cheering for them. London need to not give up. And Ellis takes a tumble to the floor and Adele Rainbow gets lead. <laughs> oh, this game. Ellis out. Completes, completes the initial. initial. Oh, we have merged. We are as one. Adele Rainbow picks up one point, but burns the time, burns the time. So, takes some tangent, 61, three and a half minutes left, burns, burns another 30 seconds. I think, oh, I need to calm down. I've not been this excited in quite some time. I think it's worth reminding people again how impressive Nantes are in this team timeout called by London because, like we say, they're they're playing with eleven players right now. Yeah. yeah. So, Skate and Crate Factory. Let's calm down for a minute. Yeah, let's talk about Skate and Crate Factory yeah. because that's a lovely thing. Need a gift for the skater in your life? Maybe they uh, just put to uh, pass to Globals. Get skate-themed art, stickers and gifts from Create and Skate Factory, a passion project by Jukebox. Duke is a fellow Derby skater playing in Barcelona, but you may remember her from her time skating with London Roller Derby, USA Roller Derby, Minnesota and Madison. You can find out more on createandskatefactory.com or on Instagram and Facebook at Create and Skate Factory. Every sale supports a fellow skater. Ooh. I think everybody needed that breather. I don't know what I need, but, but also I think it starts with gin and ends with tonic. But Nantes still have two timeouts, London still have a timeout, and Nantes also have their OR left. I can't think about that right now at all. All I can think about is what can London do to close this 12 point gap? So Adele Rainbow has a two all up front. Wolf, not sorry, Adele, Ziggy. 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 Greenberg and goes to the box that frees up Wolf for lead, but Ziggy's star pass is 10 metres behind. Nonta lined up at the back, London at the front. Oh, Wolf will found the outside line uncovered, completes for four points. Ziggy star pass on the inside. And Ziggy resetting in the straightaway. Wolf comes in for a second pass. So that's eight points. Now just four points between the two teams. Three minutes to go. Ziggy tries to do some blocking on Wolf as they go around, but Greenbergen comes out of the box, hits Wolf out, recycles, Cole it's forces the cut. So Wolf with a cut penalty, another two minute jam, one minute left in this jam. Ziggy hit out. Oh, the noise in this venue. And this is the first time I've seen Ziggy look tired this whole yeah. weekend. What a shift he's put in for look, non roller derby. Not surprisingly, looking for the star pass. Star pass complete. So it is, oh no, was it a fake? That looked, com no, no Ziggy's he's got it in hand. He's got it in hand. But he's burning clock. We've got under two minutes on the period clock. Now. Well, it's it's a two minute jam. Wolf comes out. I can't look. Wolf comes out. Three wall of Nantes up front. I'm telling you the game. By Thank the way. you. Yeah. Because I can't look right yeah. now. Ziggy hit out by party pants and recycle. Wolf struggling up front. Two seconds to go. That's it. And so three more points. Go up for London, but four oh. for Nantes. We've got a minute and a half and a five point game. So 11 points for London, takes them to 161, Nantes 166. 
Oh, I've got goosebumps, and I'm getting, I'm getting dizzy. I'm genuinely getting I'm, dizzy. I'm, I'm going to stand up again because I think that sitting down is making it worse. And Nantes have called for a timeout. Team timeout, Nantes. I think to give. To Ziggy give a break. Ziggy a break because Adele is lined up with the star on their helmet, and a, and they may change that if they have that time out. So if you can hear the audience, they're shouting the Duke Chess. Duke Chomp. Duke Chomp. Duke Chomp. It's there. That's the non thing. The Duke Chomp. It's spelt ironically C H A A M. C H A M P S. Right. Do champs <laughs> in the English. <laughs> well, no, but but the but Duchamp is the the name of the non-league, I think. No, it's a uh, Duchess. Is the so they are Lady Duchess. Well, it sounds like they're shout, shouting Do champs, which is quite funny because if they yeah. can maintain this lead in the next one minute five seconds, yeah. that's exactly what they'll be doing. No, they are Lady Duchess. So Adele Rainbow. Ellis on the Sucker Punch jam line. One minute, five seconds on the clock. We have one London blocker in the Triple A penalty box. We have Ellis taking the outside and gets lead. Adele Rainbow stuck behind the wall, breaks out. Just Kitty left. Oh, a hit out and recycles Ellis' is scoring points. Adele out. Ellis completes four scoring four points so they are now one point behind Adele now scoring there's two London blockers on track so London must be running it to get their blockers out well and you, they've got to get that lead but then Adele completes for the four points so they are both but Ellis completes for another scoring pass there's still one point between these two teams and there's going to be a timeout. And a timeout. So, one point game. 16 minutes, 16 seconds on the period clock. There will be one more jam because of the timeout. It's a three point game. Three point game. Oh. I am not okay. I think the medics I... need to know that I may need cardiac help. This is the first time announcing a call where I've actually got tears in my eyes and I've announced for London at a lot of clutch games but I know how hard they've worked for this and but and also how hard Nantes have worked for this I mean do you I mean, know think what? two months ago Lom who came last in this tournament beat them listen if Nantes take this I will be delighted and thrilled to have been witness to literal roller derby history. Yeah. But I'm going to cry a lot <laughs> for my home team. So that's the end of the team timeout. And, and Nantes now taking the team timeout. So they, they are taking... So it was London team timeout first, Nantes team timeout, they're giving everybody a break. I, I mean, if they don't put Ziggy Starpass well, we out, I'll eat all of my hats. Well, I'm looking to see, because they were going to put Adele Rainbow out before that time out. But this has now been probably two and a half minutes of breathing time. Those jammers must be exhausted. You know, remember, non to playing with 11 skaters. The, look, right, what are the French eating? What, what? Protein is, powder. Like baguettes, like Protein magic, powder. magic baguettes protein powder and gym tears i mean there's something in the water in la belle france because and it is ziggy star pass who comes out with the star on the sucker punch jam line one last jam four globals one last jam for bronze medal it's ziggy and dixie let's the two Roller derby. most springy, agile jammers we've seen. We've got two London blockers on the track, but a full non wall. What difference will that make? And it's Ziggy with lead! And nine seconds on the clock. Ziggy just waiting that clock down. Three, two, one. 
calls it. Nunt are going to Portland. And the hall erupts. Oh my God. The first time ever in WFTDA history, we have not one, but two French teams going to championship. And nobody from the UK. And no one from the UK. Only one of the top three seeds made it. Oh my God. I literally don't have words. This was incredible. So final score confirmed. 169 points to London Roller Derby, but 172 for Nantes Roller Derby. Les Duchesses, who are third place, going to Global Championships in Portland in November, and they are ecstatic. And if the word fairy tale was invented for a reason, it is this. Oh, what, I, what a joy for Euro yeah. Derby! What this whole tournament, not a single prediction has been near correct, and it just shows the growth in this whole continent this incredible tournament and if you can see Toulouse are out applauding both teams but particularly Nantes I mean what a delight for Nantes oh. to come out onto the Euro stage and to have that result yeah. I mean you know, huge commiserations to London I'm so proud of them a year ago as you said at West Track Story Nantes went from not even top 10 to second place at West Track, burst onto the international scene top ten, and a year later they're going to they're going to global championships. And I can't wait to watch that. But for the time being, we will leave you. Don't go too far because the last game of this regional championship or to regional tournament, sorry, is coming up. Our host, Crime City Rollers, and Toulouse Roller Derby. I've been loud and queer. I've been Dort Mistress and our producer has been the child. Thank you. See you back in probably 25 minutes.